Hi, I'm Shay. And I'm Lily. We are so happy that you're here. Here at HBC, we believe that we can dream big because we serve a big God. And it doesn't matter what your past may look like, you still have a bright future. So open up your heart and receive. You are good enough. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you are good enough. You are good enough to do what you are called to do because God's righteousness has become your righteousness. Too many people are, well, I'm not good enough, or, or this person's not good enough, or uh, whatever the case may be. I, I don't feel like I can do it. Well, guess what? I don't always feel like I can do it either, but I have to take control of my feelings. And I have to say, the word says that I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Amen? So tonight I'm here to tell you that you are good enough. You just have to get out of God's way and allow Him and His righteousness to lead you. Some of us get in God's way because of our religious upbringing. We put God in a box because we've always seen man put God in a box. But you're good enough. You can do it with Him. He can do it with you. He can do what? Whatever you allow Him to do. His plans and His dreams for you, let's say it that way. I don't know if God has dreams or not. He is the dream. But His plans and His dreams that He has for you to put inside of you is much bigger than what you were taught much bigger than what people have made you think about yourself, much bigger than Satan's attack on you. Some people have low self-esteem. I have, I have dealt my whole adult life with low self-esteem, and I know it's because of the way my adulthood started. You say, I don't think you act like you have low self-esteem. You don't know me good enough. Because I've fought that my whole life, and what that turns in, it, into is insecurity. And what that turns into is self-doubt. And what I have to do every day is get up and remind myself that I am good enough because of who he is, not because of who I am. Not because at 17 I lost my father and didn't have a father figure to, to teach me and to show me. Not because my mother, and I love her dearly, but I'm going to just be honest tonight. Not because she was so religious that she made me scared to sneeze or I'd go to hell. I was... I was given so many wrong implications of who God is. Religiously, I was taught if you you, you got to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, tongue talking, this and that. You know what God said? Trust me. That's what God says do. All the other stuff is wonderful. Do I believe in speaking in tongues? If God fills you with the Holy Ghost, He'll give you the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Yes, I do. But that's not a requirement for you to be saved or good enough. You are enough. And you're good enough because you're chosen by God. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds, the virtues, the perfections of Him. Somebody say Him who called you. You are proclaiming the excellencies of Him who called you. Not your excellencies because when you start proclaiming your excellencies, then Satan can go, oh yeah, but look at this. You are good enough because you are chosen by God. You're called out of the darkness to His marvelous light. See, as a believer in Christ, you have been chosen by God for a specific purpose. He's called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Why? You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are intentionally chosen by God. You are good enough to fulfill His calling because He equipped you with the righteousness of Himself, not your righteousness. You are good enough because God chose you. You're also good enough because God's righteousness covers your imperfections. I'm just going to tell you, I know that you can get out of balance either way, but I'm going to tell you, I was raised out of balance. I love my heritage, but I do not love some of the teachings that I was taught. 
Why? Because if you do this, you're going to hell. If you do that, you're going to hell. If you're doing that, you're going to hell. If you're doing, I literally at 10 years old sitting in behind an old blonde Everett piano. I don't know if anybody remembers those or not, but those old blonde Everett pianos that every church in the country had at one time. And I was sitting behind that piano one night at 10 years old, and I sit and I listened to my pastor go, we don't believe in this. We don't believe in going swimming with the opposite sex other than immediate family. We don't believe in women uh, wearing uh, any adornment other than wedding ring. We don't believe in uh, going this. We don't believe in this. I literally, inside my mind, I thought, what do we believe? God's righteousness covers your imperfections. That's why you're good enough. You're good enough because he went to the cross and he said, you are forgiven. He went to the cross and he said, it is finished. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to be good enough for it. You don't have to, to, to do this and do that. All you have to do is trust me. You say, Pastor, you're going you're gonna to go on too far on that grace thing. Give me a break. You can't go too far on the grace thing. Sin is sin. If you sin, it's wrong, period. And we all know that, most of us anyway. I'm not advocating sin. What I'm telling you is, if you focus on sin, sin's going to be on your mind. If you focus on Him, grace will be your friend and bring you to a place of believing that you can, that you are, that you're able. His grace and His love, His power... God's righteousness covers your imperfections. 2 Corinthians 5.21 said, He made Christ who knew no sin to judicially be sin on our behalf so that in Him, somebody say in Him, we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to Him and placed in in a, in a right relationship with him by his gracious, loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, God made this divine exchange. Jesus, who was sinless, took on himself our sins that we might receive his righteousness. When God looks at you, he doesn't see your your, your last sin he doesn't see the mess that you've been in God sees the righteousness of Jesus covering your imperfection because you did what Paul said to do in Romans 8 Romans 10 verses 9 it says if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus died on a cross and was raised in three days you shall be saved period your past mistakes and your inadequacies do not define you. I don't know about you, but I, I sure am glad of that. <laughs> In God's eyes, you are good enough. Why? Because His righteousness has become your righteousness. <laughs> you are good enough because God equips you for your calling. I'm going to use something that I, I did hear when I was a little boy, and I've heard it my whole life. I'm going to say it because it's so true. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. In 2 Timothy 3.17, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. When God calls you to a specific task or a specific purpose, He equips you with everything you need to nail it. God's righteousness empowers you. Don't raise your hand, but I got a question. Do you ever feel weak? Do you ever feel weak? Well, you know what the Bible says? Let the weak say, I am strong. God's righteousness empowers you, so don't give in to the flesh. God's righteousness fills you with His Spirit, so don't give in to the flesh. What does the flesh want to do? Oh, wah, wah, wah. God gives you the necessary gifts, the talents, and the abilities to accomplish what He's called you to do. You are the righteousness of God. You are good enough because God equips you for your calling. You have confidence 
And you can have confidence in knowing that you are good enough because God has equipped you. Amen? Last one. You're good enough because your worth and your identity are rooted in God. And I'm thankful for that. Ephesians 2.10 For we are His workmanship, His own masterwork, a work of art created in Jesus Christ, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which He set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us. Did you hear what I just read? The good life. Whoever come up with that saying, well, God didn't say he'd give you your wants, just your needs. Totally unbiblical. He did say he would give you your wants. I don't have this in my notes. And maybe everyone has heard this story, but for whatever reason, God just, as I was reading this scripture, God just brought this old story to my, this, this old song, this poem, this whatever I believe I've got too much low mids or something. It's real low mid, but um, it's it's something. That Red Foley, I believe, had this song out. It, this little recitation. Have y'all ever heard of recitation? If you are born after two thousand, I'm betting you've never heard the word recitation. <laughs> Maybe you have. Maybe you was raised like I was raised. But there's a recitation that I heard just the other day and as I was reading this just now it popped into my head so I'm going to share it there's this story and this poem was written back in the 1800's I don't know if it was factual or if it's just something someone thought about but it makes a good point it said there was an auctioneer and he took an old violin out one day and he held it up and it was just battered and it had all kinds of scars and scratches and he held it up and the auctioneer said can I get a dollar maybe two do I hear three maybe four nobody would bid on that old violin and all of a sudden there's an old man sitting way back in the auction house he got up and he walked up and he took the violin and he rosined the bow up he put the, the rosin on the bow and he started playing the violin. It was the most beautiful sound. After he had tuned it and he started playing the violin, he, it was the most beautiful music anyone had ever heard. He got finished and he laid the violin down. And then the auctioneer got up and he said, he held the old violin up. He said, do I hear 1,000? Do I hear two? Do I hear 5,000? And he went on and and the story, of course, was that the reason the worth changed. Can you turn this down, please? It's, I'm sorry. The reason the worth changed is because of the touch of the master's hand. Your worth and your identity is not determined by human standards. Your worth and your Identity is not determined by your accomplishments. You are God's handiwork and you are uniquely created in Christ Jesus for a purpose. Your worth and your identity is rooted in God. Your value comes from being a child of God, not because you're the best singer, not because you're the best preacher, not because you're the best whatever it is you do in this life. Your worth is simply because of the touch of the master's hand. Thank you so much for watching this sermon. We hope it encouraged you. Check out more of Apostle Jack's sermons to stay encouraged throughout the week. We also do live streams on Sunday mornings at 10 and Wednesday night chapels at 630. We would love for you all to stay connected. So go like and follow all of our socials. Life is so beautiful with Jesus and community. So, so join, join the fam! fam.